Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's training on Teams Intermediate ways that you can be successful. My name is Roxy Ndebumadu, and I will be your trainer for today. Joined by me, I have a couple of my colleagues this afternoon who I'll give the opportunity to introduce themselves. Hello, everybody. My name is Shane, and I normally work at the Microsoft Store in Pentagon City as a service advisor. Uh, but during remote operations, I have been helping people learn how to use our Microsoft suite of products. Um, so please go ahead and ask any questions you have, and we will answer them in the chat. Hi, everyone. My name is Brandon Boyd. I work alongside Shane at the Pentagon City Microsoft Store, and uh, I also will, uh, will be happy to answer any questions you have in the chat as best I can. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you, gentlemen. So everyone, my name is Roxy. I am a customer success manager in our federal business, working with a plethora of federal agencies, helping them be through, be successful with teams, remote working, and I'm just optimizing their efficiency with their collaboration suite. So like the two gentlemen said, if you have any questions throughout the training today, please, 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 please feel free to post them and we will either publish them and answer them or answer them in the background. So please answer any questions that you have. I mean, post any questions that you have. Also, one thing that I want to call out, if you have anything that you'd like to see today, um, any intermediate things that you'd like to see within Teams, please post that as well so that we can flag them and I'll do my best to go over them today. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go through our slide. So some some updates about today's session. Today is not today is not meant to be an in, um, an entry level course to Microsoft Teams. This is an intermediate session. So today we'll leave some time. We'll we'll go through some ways that you can you know get ahead with Teams, some advanced features and capabilities that will make you more successful and more productive. So that's what the focus of today's session is going to be. Oh, sorry, my desktop is acting crazy. Some of the topics that we'll cover today is why it's important to at mention channels, search filtering, the importance of replying to new threads versus creating them, team codes and why that might be important for you, announcements as, as that's a really, really popular, popular feature here in Teams, the command function, uh, some differences between the calendar features with Teams and Exchange Online, Clarity around file storage and where your files are actually stored when you're sharing them. We'll go through some web apps and we'll go through some apps all up within Teams, and then we'll save some time at the end for question and answer. So now I'm going to go. I'm going to share my screen for one sec. I'm going to stop sharing for one second so I can go to the other screen here. Alrighty, perfect. Now we're back. Oh, so the first thing I'm going to go over are some of the features that you can do with the command functionality because we talked a lot about that and I don't think people necessarily usually leverage it to its full capacity or its full benefit, honestly. So when you're thinking about the command feature, most people would just use it to generally search her name. So if I go in here and type in Abby, I see that her her name comes up as well as other things that we've been a part of together, such as chats. But when you think of the command feature, it does a lot more than what you think it does, which is if you type in the, the slash, we're gonna call it slash for today, you can do a number of things, which is quickly mark yourself as busy. So in this case, you know, I'm gonna press enter and it's gonna set my status to busy, as you can saw. Or if I do a slash call and press enter, it's gonna ask me who is the person that I wanna call. In this case, that's Abby. So as soon as I press enter, it's going to automatically call Abby and it's only asking me to allow because I am on the web browser. So as you can see, it's automatically calling Abby. No, we'll hang up because Abby's not online. When you go to command, it will show you all of the things that you can do, whether that's see somebody's activity, whether that's go to file. So we'll type in file and here's popping up all the files. Uh, that I that have been shared with me and that I've also shared um, through Teams. So here you can see a number of different files. Let's go down and click enter on intake. 
And here you see a file that I was working on previously popped up. Let me go to a different one just so it can give us a better picture. So here you can see a file, a file that I have shared or that I that I used in Teams has popped up. Now if I click edit, it will allow me to edit the file right here and right there. So I don't necessarily need to leave Teams to go to Word or go to Excel or go to PowerPoint. I can just go through the files that were already shared and just edit them right here. And when I'm done, it'll be saved. It'll be saved for this case. This one was shared in a team site, so it'll be saved in the SharePoint. So everybody that's a part of this document that, ha that this document has been shared with will have access to it. So those are some of the tips and tricks that you can do with the command feature that's really, really popular. So now I'm going to go to Teams and go over a couple tips and tricks before I get into apps. So here you see this is a not this is a team called COVID-19 Task Force and I have a general channel. Within the general channel, a lot of people, or what I like to ex explain is, I like to look at the general channel as a channel where you share updates and things that are going on within all the members that are in that team. Then you have specific other channels that are for other specific initiatives or projects that you're working on under that team for different people. So here you see there's an announcement. We talked about announcement earlier as something that we were going to go over. You see there's an announcement that has been that has been created and that there's a document that has been shared telling everyone, you know, hey, thanks for returning. Please see the 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 tab for updates. So if you go down to the bottom and you click format. Right and right there where you see new conversation, there's a drop down that will allow you to click announcement. Now with the announcement, the good thing here is that you have the ability to kind of choose pictures if you like. So let's pick a picture. I'm seeing pictures of me. Uh, I don't see any nice ones that I like. I should see though. This one here doesn't. All right, so now I'm gonna click done. Add a headline. And now I can start to type. Hey. Okay. So now we're getting into why is it important to at mention someone or at mention things or anybody. When you think about collaborating in a team site, you want to make sure that you're always at mentioning at mentioning either the person that you're speaking to directly or the team that you're collaborating with because it will ensure that everybody knows that you have posted something new in that in that group and that there's activity going on. So that will ensure directly. You want to make sure that you're you're getting that you're addressing it to the particular person or that you're notifying the entire groups because some people have their notifications set up differently. So for example, if you aren't at mentioning somebody and they have their notifications set up in a different way, they may not see it until they just happen to go open that 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 team site. So like for example, you here you see there's a work from home water cooler team site. Under here you see that there's the the HR water cooler site is bolded. That means that there's activity going on. However, if I'm not if that team site is not prevalent to me, I may not always think to go look at it because I don't see that there's activity going on that that is important that needs my attention. I just know that by this being bolded that there is activity going on in this channel, but it may not pertain to me. So if I have a couple of other things on my plate, I'm not always going to be inclined to go look at that versus here. I want to make sure that everybody looks at this updates. So I'm going to add mention them. I'm going to say please make sure. Yeah. Right, and I'm going to mark it as an I'm going to mark it as important so people also know that it's important. So here I've marked it as urgent. And I'm going to post it across multiple channels. Because I want multiple people to see it. I'm going to post it in our COVID work from home channel general. I'm also going to post it in our office of procurement channel and our philanthropy channel. As soon as I click update, you can see at the top, it's updated with all the channels that I'm going to post this to. 
I'm going to I'm going to not attach a file in this case. And then voila, you see your announcement has been posted. So that's really important to know. One also important thing to know now that we're here in a channel, whenever you're sharing a document within a team site, that document is stored in SharePoint. So that's very, very important to know because the difference is when you share a document, perhaps in a direct chat, that document is going to be stored in your OneDrive. The person who is sharing that document is going to be stored in their, your OneDrive. So in order for, let me show you quickly. So in order for Bonnie to have this document on her PC, she would need to go in and click download in order for her because I'm the person who shared this document. So it's stored in my OneDrive and any changes associated with this document that's shared in a chat will be stored in my OneDrive. Now, if I go back to the team site, any changes made to this particular document would be stored in SharePoint. So if I go down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to actually not click edit in teams. I'm going to do something a bit differently. I'm going to go to files. All right. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to open it in SharePoint. See, that's how we talked about it being stored in SharePoint. So now it's going to open. It's going to open now. Now you can see here's the SharePoint site with the COVID-19 task force group. That's public. It's a public group. So if I click on this document, let's going to let's I want to open it in another tab. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to open it another tab. Here is the document. It's right here. Now, if I go back and I click on the ellipses and I click on the version history, which is at the bottom to make sure that you're seeing all the updates that are associated with this document, I can see everybody that has made changes to this document in the version history under SharePoint. So this, these are some, some great things to note that you can uh, of a couple of different things that you can do with the documents being shared um, in team sites stored in SharePoint. So I'm going to click out of all that. So now I'm going to go I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to this team site and click the ellipses and click on manage a team. Oh, my apologies. I will slow down. My apologies about that. And please just post in the chat if I went too quickly through a particular topic and you'd like me to revisit it. So when I go to when I click when you see when you see your team sites on the left hand corner of your screen, there's an ellipsis that's going to say more options. If I click on more options, it gives me a plethora of more options. You have the ability to hide the team site. So this is for people that talk about, hey, I'm inundated with teams. We have too many. I've been added to too many. How do I kind of organize this environment for me to be able to view it in a better way? You can hide them and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. You can also manage the team. This is where you would go to add different channels, add members, or really honestly, just leave the team. So if I go to manage the team, a best practice that we recommend here at Microsoft is that you always want to have two owners to be a part of your team, just in case somebody leaves the organization, somebody isn't able to get into their, their, um, their environment. You just always really want to make sure you have two owners. So here we have three in this case. Now, if I go to settings, I can get I can get choose the ability to get a team code. Now this is really important if you're making a private team. And the reason why private versus public teams even matter is because every team that you make people can see that that team exists. So if you don't want people to be able to see the contents that live within the team it's always recommended that you make that team private as opposed to public, because if that team is public, anyone can go click join and join your team. But here, if the team is private, there are a couple of things. One, you get requests to join the team, and then two, you can send out a team code for people to automatically join the team if they have the code. 
So in this case, let's remove it just so you can see what it looks like to generate it. So for you, the default is always going to say it's going to say generate. And once you click generate, it will provide a code for you. Now, if you copy this code and see how it says guests won't be able to join with guests won't be able to join with a team code. I'm sorry, I don't know that that's a that's a misnomenclature. If you do send this this link, it will it will allow them to join as long as they have this code. So once I send this code to Bonnie, like I'll send it to Bonnie, she has the ability to just join the team as long as I send her the code. So that's how you generate. I'll go back to it just so you can see it before I pause for questions. Uh, and just uh, to Roxy, that was saying that guests will not be able to join. Oh, okay. Code. Like external users won't be able to use a code to join. Yeah, sorry, I'm seeing double things today. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, no problem. OK, yes. So this is the screen that we were at, so I'll just walk you through how to get there again. If you click on the uh, ellipses and you click manage team and click on settings, it will allow you to generate a team code right here. And as long as soon as you remove it, the code will no longer be active. And every time someone sends a request to join the team, the team, it will send you an email and outlook letting you know that there's a request or it will, I'm um, sorry, not here. It's under members. It will pop up at the top to say that somebody's requested to join your team, but no one's requested, so it's not popping up. All right, so now I'll pause to answer some questions. Shane, any questions that you want us to go over live? Uh, I do have one question. Um, somebody is asking the difference between editing and reviewing documents through Teams versus doing it through SharePoint. Thanks, that's a really great question. So truthfully speaking, it really depends on your preference because essentially it's kind of the same thing. So because Teams as an application is made up of three main components. One of that is Office 365 Groups. The second is SharePoint Online. And the third is parts of Skype for Business. So anything that you do within the team site will live on SharePoint Online anyways. So if it's if you prefer to edit it in SharePoint, you can do that. If you prefer to just stay in Teams, you can do that as well. It really just depends on your personal different your personal preference, but there is no real difference. Thanks for that, Shane. Did you want us to go over any others? Uh, somebody else says that they heard there are a limited number of private teams, or does that apply to the channels within the team? I believe that just applies to a limited number of private channels. Um, I don't think an organization has a limited number of private teams that can exist. Yeah, so there are um, there are a number of there. There is a limit to how many private channels you can have under one team. Uh, I believe that number is 50. Genuinely, uh, but I need to I, I will double check and, and make sure that we post it before the end of the session, but I believe that number is 50. So there is a limit to private channels that you can have in a team, but that limit is not extended to the overall organization. It's for each individual team. We uh, we also have a request for you to go back over how you got to the header, I believe, in the announcement. Of course. So I will just go back to the COVID-19 task force team and I'll click on general because that's where I'd like to post it. And at the very bottom of your team site screen within the channel, you'll always see start a conversation or type at to mention someone. Underneath that, there's the A kind of symbol logo, but really it's the format. If you click on that, at the top, you'll see new conversation. There's a drop down next to new conversation. So once you click on that, 
it will give you the option to switch to an announcement. As soon as I click on announcement, it gives me the option to type in a headline, change the background color if I want, add a subtype, subheader, and type my announcement. So another thing that you can do with announcements too that might be helpful is choose whether or not you want everybody to be able to reply and choose if you want to post it across multiple channels. So all of that is going to be once you go to the bottom of your screen and click format and drop down and click on either new conversation or announcement, it will give you the option to change and uh, view how you want to do it. Okay, I will discard this draft. Alrighty, so next I'll go through, I will go through how you create a private channel because we were in the team and why that's important. So let's say hypothetically we worked for say in local government or we worked for a federal housing agency. As you can see here under this team, I have a couple of different private channels. I have one for grants, I have one for the CARES Act focusing on state housing, and I have one for the CARES Act focusing on municipal housing. So if I click the ellipses next to, next to the team name, right, it's going to give me an option to be able to add a channel. Once I add, once I, once I go to this, this option now, at the bottom, you see privacy. So there's two options with privacy. Whether you want that to be a standard channel that's accessible to everybody on the team, or if you want that to be a private channel, which only specific members of the team will be able to access this. So in this case, I've had to name it. Let's name it. I'll click next and then it will add me who it will ask me who are the specific members of the actual team that I'd like to add to this particular channel. So let's see. I'll add Abby and Bonnie. Once I click add, it gives me the option to change them to an owner if I like. We'll change Abby to an owner. Then I'll click done. So now you can see my channel has been created and it has a lock box next to it. It has a lock box next to it that that signifies that it's a private channel. So one important thing to know with private channels is that it's not going to be accessible to everybody in the team. So if I go to the ellipses here and I click manage the team, it's going to show me that they're in total nine people that are part of this team. Now, in this channel right here that's private that we just created, only two people will be able to access this channel. Only the specific amount of people in this channel will be able to access this channel. So what that means is that it will never ever show up for somebody who has not been added to that channel. So for everybody else that's in this team, they will never see that this channel even exists. They will never be able to access it unless they are added. So just a quick example I will show you. Here in our municipal channel, we have a lot of engagement that's been going on and some things that have been happening. Here you can see under this single family housing the team site, there's an external, I'll go to actually manage team so you can see it. There is an external guest member that has been added from a municipal government. So if I go back to this channel, you can see how you at your internal agency can collaborate with external agencies under the private channels. So here I'm collaborating with Rasan over at the city of Bowie. We are talking about the project budgets. Um, we've, we've showed weekly updates. And then also we saw that there was a meeting that started in, on, under the Meet Now section. There was a meeting that started that these two people were a part of. So that's a really good way to use private channels. So 
So now I'll pause and answer some of the questions that I'm seeing. Uh, one of the one thing that I want to that I want to talk about is someone said that th the clarification between editing and teams versus Office 365. So when we talked about editing in SharePoint versus Teams, there is no clear difference. It's pretty much the same action. I mean, it just really depends. Teams is an application that is designed for people to be able to work the way that they feel most comfortable. So whether you're editing a document in the regular PowerPoint um, desktop app, or you're editing a document in Teams, or you're editing a document in SharePoint, it's genuinely all of the same because it's the same document. It just differs as to where you're editing it, depending on your per, your personal preference of what you prefer to do. So if you edit the document in SharePoint, it's going to bring you back to PowerPoint online, and then you'll be able to edit the document in PowerPoint online. If you edit the document here, like for example, I've got an Excel sheet, so it gives me options. I can edit it in Teams. I can edit it on the desktop application or if I click on files, I can view it in, in, in SharePoint. So there really is genuinely no clear difference. It just really depends on how you'd prefer to work and where you'd prefer to work. What, of course, most of us would advise is staying in Microsoft Teams so you never really have to leave Microsoft Teams so you don't have to click between different applications because that's the reason why the product was evolved was so that you can have the comfortability of staying in one hub, one place in, in the hub and be able to do your work most efficiently without clicking back and forth between different applications. So I just wanted to make sure that I clarified there's, I didn't add much of a difference because there really is none. Uh, the other one that I want to mention um, too, there was a question around how does Teams interact with Skype? So essentially Teams and Skype should not live within the same environment. Most organizations who choose to deploy Teams should genuinely be in Teams only to Teams only mode to be able to get the full advantage and the full capabilities of Teams because when you have Teams and Skype running in the same environment, uh, it starts to eat at your bandwidth and other things that are on that are on your back end. So we don't necessarily advise or recommend that you have Teams and Skype running in the same environment. The end of life for Skype online is next year around July. So Skype will be phasing out anyways. So you, if you have Skype online, you won't have the access to run it because it won't exist anymore. So essentially team, the makeup of Teams, the application is made up of parts of Skype for business. So as Teams, as the product continues to evolve and continues to get more features and things like that, particles of Skype for business will completely dissolve. But for right now, it doesn't include parts of Skype for business, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have Skype for Business and Teams running at the same time that's actually advised against. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. Uh, Shane, any other questions that you want us to cover? No, sorry. Uh, right now I'm um, researching something and then I will let you know uh, what the other uh, questions I need you to cover are. Sorry about that. I, uh, I do have one. Uh, there's a, someone who has asked a question about the possibility of sub channels under other mm -hmm. channels, and I wonder if that's an opportunity to talk about the use of tags. Ah, OK, good one. So essentially, Teams doesn't give you uh, and it doesn't give you a way to uh, create channels under other channels, but it does allow you to um, it does allow you to tag different things. Uh, Brandon, can you remind me how you get to tag? Sure, yes. Uh, so with the use of a tag, you, uh, uh, you can find them in the more options uh, under a team. I believe tags should be at the bottom. Under. I'm sorry. So if you go to the uh, Teams housing area to the left, yeah, and then then the the ellipsis. I see. And then manage tags, or maybe under a channel, maybe under a specific channel. The team itself or the channel is where yeah. uh, manage tags should be an option. Manage. Towards you, the bottom. You also uh, have to be an owner. Um, so if you are not an owner or tags are just turned off for that team, that could be a possibility too. Oh, fair enough. 
Yeah, I think it might be turned off because I'm. I I figured that's where it was, but because I wasn't seeing it, I wasn't understanding what was going on. Sure. Let me Sorry. see if there's another one. And, uh, just one second. Let me see. Not the sun type. Clicking on the wrong things here. Yeah, it should be at the bottom. Let me just check one more time. It also just might be an opportunity to make another private channel if that's an option to the user as well. Yeah, so there is so there is a, a use case that we are a feature that we call tag that gives you the ability to tag something. Um, it, it might not be enabled for this tenant itself because I don't see it, but it usually is under like the gentleman stated usually under it manage and when you go to the bottom, it should be there. Uh, and that kind of helps out, but there is no possibility to have sub channels under a channel. It's what we recommend is either creating more channels or uh, either you, yeah, either you can create more channels or you basically, you basically would, you would uh, create a private channel. So that's kind of like the way, the workaround that we recommend uh, right now. Thanks, gentlemen. Are there any of the questions that you want me to go over before we move on to apps? Um, no, I, I think right now we're we're clear to move on. Okay, thanks. So I just want to go over one quick thing before we move on, just so this group knows. Anything that you do in Teams in terms of the calendar functionality is going to be mirrored in your Exchange calendar. So I just want to make sure that we everyone knows that. So like, let me show you a real time example that makes much more sense. Wait one second, I will open it because I we get I want I just want to touch on this a little bit because we get a lot of questions around. Hey, I'm scheduling meetings in Teams. Oh, but I'm scheduling them in Exchange or Outlook, what does that mean for me? Or what's the difference? And there, there is no difference. You can schedule a Teams meeting, you can schedule a Teams meeting in Outlook, or you can schedule it in Teams. It really just depends on your personal preference. Me personally, I prefer to schedule my meetings within uh, within Teams. That's just my, That just tends to be my personal preference. So you can schedule them within Teams, or you can schedule them in Outlook. And there is no true, true, um, true, true difference. And just keep them in everything that you do in Teams for, as far as the calendar is going to be integrated into your Outlook. So here you can see this is my Teams calendar, my normal Teams calendar, right? So you see all of these different things on my Teams calendar. So if I minimize that and I show you my Outlook calendar, it's going to look the exact same because Teams is mirroring everything that I have on my Outlook calendar. So as you can see, there are no clear differences in terms of where you schedule it. You can see in my Outlook, I have the option to schedule a new Teams meeting, or I can just schedule that directly in Teams. So just want to note that Teams is going to mirror everything that you're doing in your Outlook calendar. The same thing goes for the presence functionality. At the top, you can see that I'm busy. We had forced set this in the very beginning, but genuinely, if I reset my status, this should genuinely work. Okay, maybe because I overrided it. But genuinely, what usually happens is that Teams, teams activity, oh, there it is. Teams activity will mirror your calendar. So because I'm active in Teams, I have nothing on my calendar, it's going to show people that I'm available for them to be able to reach out to or call if they want to call me. However, another, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to send my picture. Another example here is you can see here Teams is mirroring my activity. Now because I have my desktop shared, and it's, it shows people, hey, I'm on Do Not Disturb, number one, so I don't get any notifications. And then also you can see that I'm presenting. So Teams will mirror your activity. If I were to stop presenting, Teams would tell people that I'm in a meeting or I'm in a call to let them know, hey, I'm busy at the moment. 
So that's kind of like some important things to note there is that Teams is genuinely, I'm going to move this over, Teams is genuinely mirroring your Outlook activity. So that's really important there. So now I will go back and I'll go into Apps. So I'll show you and then we can create some or add some on our own. So first I'll show you at the top you see a whole bunch of tabs for this team because we have customized it, we've added things that we want to see or or what we want to be priority for this team. So you see all these different things at the top there tabs. If I click on this one tab, right, policy completion, it's going to open up a planner that I have added as a tab to this channel. Now planner is a really, really unique application because it allows you to keep track of the progress that you're making on different projects or just different things that you're working on. It's a way to kind of monitor, track the progress, and hold people accountable, including yourself, on the things that you're working on. So here you can see my planner, and this is for my policy completion. Or if I go to my office reopening plan, which is another planner, you can see there are a couple of things here. So I'll start in this one. So always, when you open a planner or when you add a new, a new planner, it's always going to come with the to do tab right and you can choose with the ellipses whether you want to delete that or rename it but generically it will always be created with a to do tab now you can add individual tabs as well of different things that you want to focus on so because this is our reopening office plan planner i have tasks for office employees tasks that are designed uh, for remote employees and tasks that are designed for contractors so I have different people that are on my team that are working on these different tasks that are focused on office employees, remote employees, and contractors. So here you can see I created a task that says add announcement for employees who are based, who are office based. Here you can see my task, and I have the ability to do a number of different things. You can change it and add this task to a different bucket. You can mark the progress and this is really going to be important because this is how you're going to track what's going on. So here I can say it hasn't been started yet and then I can change the priority from important to urgent to low to medium. You always always want to add a due date and funny enough this one is due today because that's how you're going to track the progress. Then you have the ability to add different checklists. You can add attachments to this plan and you can add comments or updates. So now I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to go back to show you how we even get there. So as you can see, I'm in my team site normally. And if I click, oops, where did I, oh, I've added so many tabs here. Wow, where's the plus sign? It was just there. See, what's this? Oh, this under, okay, here it is. So at the top, what you'll normally see if you have less amount of tabs than me, let's just tame, let's just remove this one. If not, sorry. Yep, let's remove this one. All right, you see that there's a plus sign always going to be there. If you click on that plus sign, it will give you a number of different tabs that you can add, right? Planner being one of them. So if I click on planner, it will ask me to create a new plan or if I have an existing plan that's already created, um, I can use that. But I can create a new plan. I'd name my plan. And then it would start all over. So let's name our plan. Let's say. By press, I don't want to post about this to the channel. So if I click save, now you can see I have a new planner titled Public Health Emergencies. So 
like I mentioned earlier, it's always automatically going to have the to do section, right? And I can change. I can rename that, remove that or delete that. So let's add a new bucket. Right, so let's add. Maryland. We're going to add Ohio. And California. Because these are the different states that have active public health emergencies. And under these buckets that I have created, I can add different tasks. So let's say. OK, I can set a due date. I'm going to set this due date to Friday. And I'm going to assign it to myself included. And I'm also going to assign it to Blair. And now I'm going to click add task and there it is. It's created. But we're not done yet because we kind of have to add more information for make this tangible. So if you double click it, now you can see the more the information that's already there. So in progress, it's it has not been started, so we're going to change this to in progress because I'm working on it and we're going to change this to important. We're going to select a start day, which is going to be today. The date is the 19th. Right. I'm going to add a checklist. I don't need a checklist here. I can add an attachment, a link or a file. Let's add a file. Let's just pick the one at the top. So as you can see, it's adding our file. So surely that will be there. There you go, and then I can add comments. Team, let's this. I right, can click send. And then the other thing that you can do with um with with different tasks is that you can color code them. So let's gonna say let I can change the 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 um the color code focus so let's say funding is for this one because this is about funding oh wow i didn't even include it right and then i'm going to color code it red there you go so now our task is completed well, it's not completed as in done, but it's completed in terms of you made it so anybody that's on the team can go here and click and get the updates so then I'm going to exit out of that. So this is important. All of the all of the labeling and all of the information, the contents are important because you're going to want to visualize what's going on. So let's go to charts. So at the top, you see we have board, then we have charts. Here goes the nitty gritty data. Here you can see the status. So we have one task that's left, right? And this is why it's important to add the, all this information. You have one task that's left. There's one in progress, which is the one that we just started. You have one task that's for the bucket under Maryland, right? And then these are all of the members that are that are a part of the team. And these are the members that have plans associated with their names that they that have been assigned to them. So as you can see for Roxy, there's one plan, and then for Blair, there's one plan. So I can go to the bottom to see if it's, I mean, why, sorry, not, not the bottom. I can see whether it's not started, it's in progress, it's late, it's completed. These are all the things that I can see, and this is why it's important to, to, to add in that more information. If you look on the right-hand corner, we see a number of different things here, so you can group them by to-do. Here it's grouped by the state of Maryland or you can filter them by label. So here, if I go click on it, 
right? I go out. It's going to filter it by my label. So see, you have the red label here, and that's what it's filtering it by. So this is kind of how you create a plan and why it's important. Now, if we click on schedule, this is how you view what's going on by the calendar. So we have something to reach out to the governor's office on public health emergency funding, and it's due on Friday, which is when it stops. Now, let's say hypothetically, I went in there and changed the due date to, I'm going to change the start date to yesterday and change, well, no, I'm going to change the start date to 15 and change the due date to yesterday. Let's see how that changes things. Now you can see it's in red because that means it's late. So if I go to my chart, you see how that changes to red and it tells everybody that, hey, this is late. So this is how you really get to track the progress of some of the things that you're working on with the team and with the group. So I'm going to pause now and see if the team has any questions they want me to touch on. Uh, one uh, question I have here is um, any thoughts on the reasons to host a team site on teams or channels versus SharePoint online pages? Uh, maintaining using both seems like a lot of work. I guess the question is um, using teams versus using SharePoint pages. Um. Again, I think that it just really goes back to your personal preferences. I mean, because you're using Teams, I and most of my colleagues would always recommend that you just stay in Teams because it just makes it easier. It just makes it more seamless. But for people who are very much more familiar with SharePoint, they prefer SharePoint and they're not comfortable with Teams yet, they may want to use SharePoint. But I think that defeats the purpose of being on Teams uh, to use SharePoint because SharePoint is a part of Teams. It's all one, genuinely. Uh, so I think I think we would all recommend that you would just use Teams, but there's no clear difference. Any other questions? None right now. OK, wonderful. So when we click on the plus sign, you see there are a number of different tabs, right? So you can add a tab for PowerPoints that you're already working on to make sure that it's at the top for the, the team. You can add a tab for Power BI, so you can make sure it's on the top for the team. You can add a tab for OneNote. You can add one for SharePoint. You can add one for your document library, and you can add one for Stream or Word. I don't necessarily recommend adding it for Word. I mean, you can if there's a very pressing document that you're consistently working on that you want the team to call attention to, but the more popular ones are Planner, Power BI, uh not really sharepoint and stream so essentially if i click stream it's going to ask me for a link that i'd like to that i'd like to um add as the tab so what that looks like is is this so i went through that process i added a link of a previous meeting that was recorded and here you go. It is a tab at the top of the team that lets everybody know if they need to see an example of external collaboration, they would click here. So let's talk about why that's important or how you even get there. So we had a meeting. As you can see, it was recorded. If I go to this and this is the 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 meeting the meeting that we had in May, right? And every meeting that you have, it will kind of have like a, a chat left behind just in case you guys were chatting because it's persistent for you to be able to circle back on it. So here I can access the recording from the BEP morning meeting. So if I click on the ellipses, it'll ask me if I want to open it in stream or if I want to get the link. So this is where I'd get the link for different meetings or different tabs that I may want to add for stream. But here we're going to open it in stream because I'm going to talk to you about why stream is important because I think a lot of people don't know. So when you have meetings in, my, in Microsoft Teams, most of you who are probably used to Skype are used to when you record the meeting, it's transcribed for like an hour or two hours, and then it's it's downloaded uh, to your it's it's downloaded to your desktop 
and then you have to share it like that or do different things that you want to upload it. Now with Microsoft Teams, every meeting that you record is hosted in Microsoft Stream. Microsoft Stream is a cloud-based application that focuses on media services. So think of it as your organization's personal YouTube for you. So it is automatically transcribed and uploaded in Stream. Now you can go in here and add closed captioning if you would like. You can go in here and change, you know, some of the different features about the video. If I click on update video details, I can choose whether I want this recording to be accessible to everybody in my organization. I can change the name, so I can just change it to external collaboration. I can change the video language to whatever I want it to be. In this case, I'll change it to Dutch. I can allow comments, and then I click apply at the top, and now you can see it's called an external collaboration. So these are the different things that you can do with Microsoft Stream that makes it really easy. On the right hand side, you can see some of the other meetings that were some of the other recordings that are already here that are public for everybody to see. If I go under my content and click videos, this is kind of how I'll see some of the ones that I recorded. So how do you even record? That is a great question. So I'm going to just go to calendar and go into a meeting for the sake of going into it. Or actually, let's do this. Let's make it um, a bit easier. Let's see if this will work. Let me try something and see if it will work. All righty, now let's see something. Okay, as you can see, because my organization allows external access, I've got the external entity calling me. Oh, sorry. Well, this is an example of how external people can call you and how you can collaborate with external people should your organization allow that. So you have the external person calling you. You have the chat history here if you want to chat. So now I'm going to hang up. Now we're going to do this differently. We're going to go to the team site because I want to show you how to record. And we're going to go here and we're going to at the bottom at the bottom of this here team, we're gonna initiate, establish a meeting. Just so, sorry, wrong click. So you can see what that looks like. Alrighty, so now we're doing a meeting and a channel. So in this channel, it's going to notify all the people that are part of it that there's a meeting going on. So if I click join, this is how you would schedule or have an ad hoc meeting within a channel rather quickly. Now before I show you how to record, a fun thing that you can do is, and this is why this is important, as you can see, somebody in the meeting has raised their hand because they would like to speak and they don't want to come off mute. If I go to participants and I go to more options, I can lower their hand after they're done talking. Or that person can essentially share their screen. And this goes into the mobility of how Teams is a great application that you can use on the go, right? So now somebody, this external partner is sharing their screen and you can see what's going on. See, you can see our team site that has one guest that we were working in earlier. If I go back, see, we talked about private channels. 
Now for this person, they only see two channels because they're only a part of the general because they're part of the team and they only see the private channel that they're a part of, which is the CARES Act for Municipal Housing. But if I go to our teams here, we see much more channels because we're a part of those private channels. So that goes to show you that what it will look like for somebody who's not involved in a particular specific private channel. So this is important. So as you can see, there was a meeting that was started easily. Could just click join and click join, can reply here. Yep, and you see there's a notification that was at the bottom. We can open the document and work on the document from here. And we can just have normal chat conversation. Now we just added a file. We just added a tab. Um, we just added a we added in tabs and things like that. And as you can see, the different announcements are here and all that other stuff. Here you can see in the channel, we recorded one of the meetings, right? And we posted them. So this is important for, for people who ask questions. Hey, I uploaded the recording and I have guest users that are part of that channel. They will never be able to get access or be able to view the, the recording because Microsoft Stream is an internal based only application. So the external entity, even if you post it in the channel, they still will never be able to access it because you can see it says invalid token, authentication token it means they don't work for your organization, so they can't view the contents of that recording. So that's a really important one to know. So now I'm going to hang up. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to hang up for that one. And now we're going to go to how do you even get to how do you even record in the first place? One thing to know is that Microsoft Teams will never ever auto start recording you. I think that's a question that a lot of people ask like, hey, Will this record me? Um, you know, is it going to auto uh, automatically turn on? It will never start re recording your meetings, you know, automatically. That's just not something that's just not within the privacy, con the privacy settings of Microsoft. So now I'm in a meeting that we set up. It's a reoccurring meeting. And when I click on the ellipses, it shows me an option to start recording. So if I click start recording. Right, so it lets me know. After this meet, after the meeting, I can find this recording in the channel conversation. So voila, now we're recording. Here you can see at the top, it's notifying me that I'm recording, and it's also going to notify everybody else that this meeting is being recording, recorded. So everybody else will know that they're being recorded. So we'll give them this, their this, this a disclaimer at the top and then it'll also highlight the privacy policy if people need more information. So if I go to stop recording, click stop. Now we're done recording. Here you can go if you go to the the con the conversation portion, the chat, you can see the meeting recording has been stopped. It's saving the recording. So once we are done, that recording, once it's done transcribing, that recording will be accessible to you. So if I click hang up, and, and by the way, it's always going to ask you how was the quality of the call every time you hang up. It's a Microsoft feature and really what the importance of this is, it allows your organization and Microsoft to also monitor and understand the quality of your call. So if there are droppage, if there's failures, if you're seeing pixelated views, things like that, it gives us the ability to improve on that stuff. So that's why this is important. Unfortunately, you will, you will not, a lot of IT, some IT shops ask if we can remove that. It's not something that we can remove. It's built into the application the way that it is, but it does give you the ability to have those insights to understand where the failures are coming from and what's going on with the, the user's experience. So that's something that I want to make sure that um, I highlight because everybody tends to ask about that one. Okay, let's go back to tabs and now let's open another one. Now I'm going to go to another Let's go to another channel that doesn't have as many tabs as them at the top. So here I am in the general text section, and if I click plus tab, we can add a we we added a planner already, so we can add a PowerPoint. 
and we added stream already. Oh, sorry, this channel doesn't have any files in it. Let's go back to the other one. Okay, so there's a PowerPoint here. And now that I click save, we can all edit this, this PowerPoint right here from Microsoft Teams. So if I click edit, it's going to open the PowerPoint now. Right, and you see the document and I can go in there and I can delete the pictures. And, and put it back. And we can work on this together if there are multiple people working on this or multiple people in this channel. So a question I saw come up earlier. Is that can multiple people work on a document or anything in teams at the same time absolutely that is really what we stress for the collaboration portion to make you more successful with the application is for you to be able to collaborate so i can change the title here and if anybody else that was working on this and the, anybody else that was in the general channel can go in and add updates as well at the same time or i can open it in my desktop application and do it in my desktop but for this case we don't want to. If I right click, I can rename the tab. Call it presentation. And the tab is renamed. In this case, we'll go ahead and just remove it. We don't need it. Technically, and now we're removing the tab. The quality portion was after it's after you hang up a call. So whenever you hang up a call, it will ask you how was the quality of your call. So that's where it will pop up and that's where you'll see it. So I know we have we save um, some time closer to the end for question questions to be answered live. Are there any questions that anyone wants to bring up at this time um, and get answered? That we may have not answered. Uh, I have uh, uh, one. Uh, can a guest participant meeting uh, use the record option? Oh, that's a great question. I don't remember. Let me just try and then we can find out. So I'm going to try and see because I actually genuinely don't remember. Oh, sorry. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm sorry, Roxy, what is it you're trying to do? It's uh, I don't remember if guests are allowed to record the call. Like, are they allowed to initiate the recording? They won't be able to, I mean, they won't be able to download it or take it away. Um, no, I don't think so because I'm a guest in another tenant and I do not have the option at all to initiate a recording. So I do not believe guests can record a uh, call. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So then the answer is no. Thank you to both All of you. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I see another question about what are the red exclamation points next to the channels. So basically these exclamation points notify that something has been marked as urgent. So here this exclamation point was because something was marked as urgent. So if I go to general, I'll see or budget. I see, yep, there are some messages that have been marked as urgent. So they're flagging that there's immediate attention needs. Uh, there's immediate attention for an unread urgent marked message that's there. So if I click here, there is a message marked as urgent. Yep. So here, Julia, jo Johanna has updated the calendar and, you know, marked this message as urgent. 
So it just shows me things that have been either unread or unattended to, and the red exclamation points signify that they've been marked as urgent. So see, yep, this one's urgent. Any other questions I can answer? Oh, yep, here, just to show you. So we just, uh, no, no, that's not that. We go back to the channel. And we go back to the channel and we go under the municipal housing. Well, not this one, sorry. We just had, um, sorry, I'm blanking really quickly. I'm trying to figure out where my meeting was. One person is curious why their screen is clear when using Teams itself, but then in a training, the screen gets blurry. That is interesting. So basically, we are saying that when you're training and you're sharing your screen, that it gets blurry and it's a bit small. They may also be referring to the viewing of your screen right now that you're sharing. And make it bigger. But that could be a connection issue. We just make it bigger. All right, so I made it a little bigger for us. Yeah, so hopefully that clears it up. Yes, uh, yes. So with Microsoft Teams, you can share your desktop. So that's a, a huge feature. That's a part of it. So let me go in and show you how you can do that. So earlier in the presentation, when I was sharing, uh, when I was sharing my my uh, my my phone, that was that was a, a version of me sharing my desktop. So yes, absolutely. So let's just join this budget sync really quickly, so I can show you how to do that. All right, so here the the arrow is going to signify share. So if I click on that, it will ask me, do I want to share PowerPoints instead or do I want to share my desktop? Let's say a PowerPoint because I'm kind of already sharing my desktop with you for this presentation. If I share the PowerPoint, all it will do is that it will share the PowerPoint and not exactly my screen per se. So if I go to the next one and I click slide and I move forward with the slide, I can kind of see different different advancements of the slide. So it allow like sharing your screen this way it allows you to kind of view it at your own individual pace. I can stop presenting as well. So now we're done presenting. So here it goes that how was the quality again? We'll say the quality was good. And here it is. And I think there's someone having problems with viewing uh, the screen. So um, based off of what I'm presenting and what I can see, the screen is quite big. The normal size, if I take it back down to 100, as you can see at the top, it's this, I was in normal side, which is 100, which is the median. But if I take it up, you can kind of see it at a bigger scale. So I'll leave it at 175 for you, but the normal view is at 100. So I have it at 175 to make it a little bit bigger for people who are having problems seeing the screen. So here you can see the meeting was ended. So wondering if anybody has any more questions or anybody they, anything they'd like to see me go over today. Feel free to drop any additional questions in the chat if you have uh, anything else you'd like to see uh, gone over in this training. Okay, awesome. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can show you that would be really helpful. 
we had one just drop in. Uh, can you show how to select documents located on your computer to share? Yes, of course. All right, so let me go back to the chat. I'm just going to join a meeting just for the sake of being able to show you. So one thing I want to point out, call out to is anytime you join a meeting, right, and there's under four people in the meeting, it will automatically join you unmuted. When there are four or more people in a meeting, you will be join, joining the meeting on mute. So that's why for people who are seeing differences there, like right now, see, I would be the only person in this meeting. That's why it's automatically setting me to unmute. So that's something to note. But if there were four or more people in this meeting, it would automatically join me muted. So I'll join now. So at the bottom of your screen, there's an there's um you have the camera functionality, you have the mute and unmute, and then you have the share. So if I click share, it gives me options. I can browse kind of what through my computer through OneDrive or through different teams and channels that I'm a part of that have files, or I can share my desktop. I'm not going to share my desktop in this example because as you can see, there's a red bar around the screen, meaning that I'm already sharing my desktop with you. So I'm going to click on this PowerPoint that's already here and just click it. And now it will say that it's opening the PowerPoint and loading it for people to be able to see it. So here you can see that it's presenting. That's why it says stop presenting. And on everybody's screen, they'll have an opportunity to either advance the slide if they want to see you know, more slides at a quicker place, or they'll have the opportunity to slow it down and not see it at, as a quicker pace or should see it as you're sharing it. So there are a couple of different options that they have. They can follow along with you or they could choose to view it at their own pace. So if I click stop presenting, and now the slide is gone. So that's basically how you'd share a PowerPoint. Is there a difference between apps at the left column and apps in a channel? So essentially not really. Like the difference is, so here, these are all the apps that are available for me to kind of see right now, right? So if I go and click on if I click on um, apps that are in a channel, the only difference is that the person who owns this channel or the different people that are a part of this channel wanted there to be an app associated for this channel for people to be able to view it. So basically it's kind of like customizing the environment to the way that you want it to be. So with this COVID-19 task force team, this apps, these apps are added for all the members of this actual team for them to be able to work on it. Now, if I go to the ellipses and click on the planner app here, it'll show me all my tasks, right? That are assigned to me and associated with me and I can view them all. So these are the ones that are not started yet and I could just update it from here and say completed. As you can see, it went away and moved into the completed bucket. I see one here that's in progress. I can mark that not started. You see it went to the not started bucket. So it's just really honestly the way the um, associated with your app, your your tasks and the things that are associated with you more directly for you as opposed to anything else. And then you can view it by the week. These are some of the things that went on this week in terms of planner and me. So those are the, the, the core differences. Think of the tabs and the, the channels and the team site as you know very focused for that team and think about you know you using this portion of the the app as very focused on you yeah so that's a good question is there a way to move the icons in the middle of the meeting screen uh it often blocks what's being presented that's a really great question so uh, I don't I don't think I'll be able to show you because I'm sharing my screen, but that feature is coming so it will move to the top the top right so it won't block anything that's on the screen that that entire bar is going to be moved to the top right so you won't you won't have to worry about that. That's a great question. 
If you start a task and change your mind, can you delete the task from the Teams? Let's go do it. Alrighty, who created this, Abby? Is there one that I created it? The policy, where's the other one that we just did? Alrighty. Oh, this one. Sorry, this is a bit confusing. All right, the ellipses. Yep. So once you go to the one that you started here, you see I started this. Reach out to the governors. Uh, no, sorry. If you click on the ellipses, you hover over it and click on the ellipses. You have the option to delete it. I won't leave delete this one because it looks kind of cool. But yeah, you have the option to delete it. Thinking. I wonder if anybody else has any more questions for us today. Shane, any more questions? Um, I am currently uh, trying to figure out, let me see. Um, I saw something about offline functionalities for Teams, so I'm looking up the answer to that question right now. Um, can you show how to create a virtual background when you're having a meeting? I guess that is the blur background option. Yep. Let's do it without showing my face. All right, I'm just going to... So under more, hmm, GCC, fascinating. I don't think that feature is available in GCC yet. Yeah, I don't think that's a feature that's available to in GCC to allow you to customize your background. It is available in commercial. What mean that means that it's coming to GCC, but it's not available yet. All right, and uh, I just found what I was looking for on June 9th, the ability to access pinned chats and channels while offline was added. Um, however, that was added to commercial and it may not be available in GCC yet. So just know that uh, eventually teams will have the ability to access your pinned chats and channels. So basically when you pin something, it's kind of like marking it as a favorite um, and teams will download that information, allow you to access it well offline. That's a good point. I see a question that asks if you can, can you have a team for just yourself so you can use the planner function? Absolutely, I have one for myself. So yeah, absolutely, you certainly can. Uh, I assume only an owner can add a planner to a team channel, a team or a channel. Nope, anybody can add it. So anybody that's associated with the team or that's that's um, on the team can add a planner to the team. And called how does contact look at that's an area that I'm not very familiar with. Let's visit it. Let's just. So there are two things about con because I know there there's a question that says in calls, how does the contact list get populated? So there are two things and then I'll go to the question about the buckets. Two things with this. One is when your organization. Has a calling plan, it will associate different people within the contact list so the different people in their calling number so if your organization doesn't have a calling plan 
there won't be, you know, much of much here because there's no calling plan. So there's there's really no like there's no calling plan to be able to, you know, truly leverage this feature. So that's kind of one thing to note. So usually it will get populated. It's populated from your your um, organization or you manually add numbers or it's associated with, you know, the contacts that you already have in Outlook with numbers associated with it. But this is associated with a calling plan, which many organizations don't have. Some do and some don't. But that's not to say that you can't you can't um, that's not to say that you can't create you can't make calls over teams it's just that that person has to have teams because then it's going over the internet as opposed to you calling a phone number any other question Shane, Brandon, do we have any other questions? Uh, I'm currently answering the question about grouping by buckets, but uh, other than that, I uh, don't see anything else. We had another one that just popped in, um, and it can be shared with other members of the channel for a meeting collaboration. If yes, can it be shared before a meeting for members to input data? I'm assuming that's about planner. Um, it could be. It also sounds like uh, it is regarding files, like sharing files within a meeting. Um, and I know if you create a meeting invitation from within Outlook, you can attach a file to that invitation email. Um, if you create a Teams meeting within Teams itself, you can upload a file to that meeting uh, by using it in the um, the meeting chat. You can add a file in that meeting chat, and that file will be accessible by anybody within the meeting. Yep. Oh, I see. It's for planner. OK, the good question. So essentially, Planner is associated with channels and teams. So if you're looking to share a planner, you would have to attach it to a team or you'd have to just use the application standalone on its own and then just add different people to the to the plan. When you're adding people to the plan and the standalone application, it will send them an email that they've been added or you can share the link with them. But it's not something that you can associate, like you can't just go attach the planner in the chats of a meeting. It, it doesn't work that way. You can attach the link, but you can't associate the planner itself because it's an add on through Teams and Teams channels. Can you save a file directly to SharePoint from an email? Or do you have to save it to the file on the desktop and then upload it to SharePoint? Um, that's a tricky one. It, it really just depends on what you're trying to do with uploading the file to SharePoint. Because are you uploading the file to SharePoint for the team? Or are you uploading the file to SharePoint because you're using that as your as your OneDrive? That's a bit of a trickier one that we probably would need a little bit more context on. Okay. Uh, I would I would just like to interject. Yeah. Uh, if you are a part of a SharePoint um, or you are using a channel within Teams, uh, all channels within Teams do have a SharePoint folder associated with them. Uh, there is actually a function called sync which will allow you to add that SharePoint folder to your computer, much like uh, OneDrive, so that it is accessible in File Explorer. And once you have done that, that SharePoint folder just becomes a, uh, a folder just like any other folder on your computer, meaning if you are sent a file as an attachment in an email, you could then um, click Save As 
navigate to the SharePoint folder that is on your computer and save it there and it will update in real time. Um, of course, you do know, you do need to have uh, read and write permissions for that SharePoint folder to do this, uh, but that is a way to save an email directly to SharePoint. Thanks so much for that, Shane. Thank you for thank you for answering. This is this is perfect. Thank you. Well, with that being said, I would like to thank everybody for joining today's training. The recording will be made available to you and thank you for spending this last hour and 30 minutes with us. We really appreciate it and hopefully we were able to answer all of your questions. I see there's one more question that just came in, so I'll just answer that. Can you create a file in Word and share share the docs? in the file within a team or is there a better way to share the file with the team? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can you can you can add a tab and create a new word by adding a tab or you can, you know, just upload it here under files. You can just click upload and upload um, a word document if it's one that you just want the team to work on or you can just upload it at the bottom by attach and upload the word document so there are a number of ways that you can do it but you can you can create a you can create a word document which essentially is a file within teams yes all righty with that being said thank you for joining everyone and i hope you have a wonderful wednesday thank you